Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. In this episode, we're going to do something slightly different. Normally, I cover three points, and admittedly, we will cover three points here, but this is what I call the blinding flash of the obvious series. So, essentially, what happens is I'm sitting around trying to figure out why does this stuff happen, and then there's this kaboom. And suddenly you have a blinding flash of the obvious. Shall we get started? Of course we should. Okay, so it has always bothered me why clients leave. And when that thought crossed my mind, I was sitting at the cafe. But not any cafe. I had been avoiding this cafe for well over a year or more. So now I had two thoughts. Why do clients leave? And why did I return to this cafe? In case you're wondering, the answer is now coffee. And if it wasn't the coffee, then it has to be something else, right? But let's leave the cafe for a second and go online, say to a membership site instead. Let's say you belong to a membership site and your membership fee comes up for renewal. Why do you stay or why do you leave? The usual answer is it's the product or it's the service or the content. And yet, when we look at membership sites all over the place, there is no shortage of content. No matter how grotty the site, there's way more content than you can browse, let alone consume. Videos, audio, Articles, reports, they're all there. They're all swarming around you with increasing intensity. And if content were really the issue, you would have no problem, would you? But maybe it's the flip side. Maybe it's not the content, but the opposite of content. Maybe there's too much content. Maybe you can't really absorb it all. You've had your fill. And now you need to buckle down. You need to focus on your business. Even if you've received advice and answers to your question, even if your business has indeed gone ahead, you still think, well, wait a second, I need some breathing space. I need to implement all of this information. In effect, we're leaving because we're saying we need some time to implement all this information. We have all this information. Now we have to implement it. We have to leave. But none of us have the time. We didn't have time yesterday, or last week, or last year, or even in the last decade. Time marches on to the sound of a jiggling rumba beat. And there is no way we can stop this time parade. So it can't be the focus of time. Because the moment we've left the site, the moment we've left that information, that site will cease to exist. And then something else will replace it. Some other information, some other course, some other membership site. And anyway, back to the coffee. So I was having that coffee and that's when I got my B photo, that's B-F-O-T-O, which is the blinding flash of the obvious. And here it is. People, clients, they don't leave because they need time to focus. They don't leave because they're not getting enough content. They don't leave because they have too much content. They may say that they need the money, but often that goes into some sort of course or education, so it gets replaced by something else. So why do they leave? If it's not the money or the content or the time, then what is it? It's the people. And here's the story about the cafe. We were regulars at the cafe about two years ago, and then something happened. A lot of the people at the cafe, and by people I mean the staff, they left. 
So the manager, Justine, left and she took some of the staff with her. And suddenly the place wasn't so appealing, even though we knew that nothing much had changed. The location hadn't got worse, the coffee hadn't changed, so what had changed? Only the people. Two years slipped by and we avoided the place. And one day early this year, the current manager invited us in. She told us that we would get great service and that we would get great coffee. But now we had a contact, we had someone. And suddenly we were home again. We got to know the current staff, they got to know us, they know that we don't drink cold water, we just have hot water. They know that I like my coffee left-handed, yes, I'm left-handed, so the design has to be left-handed. And all of these little things started to play themselves out. The blinding flash of the obvious is just people. When we are asked why we buy products or services, we often give a logical reasoning. We reel out the features, we reel out the benefits, but in reality, it's the people. It's the reason why you and I have a preference for a particular petrol station. When there are petrol stations and petrol stations and more petrol stations, they all have approximately the same product. They're all approximately the same place, but we have a preference. It's the reason why we don't care for rotating hairdressers or barbers we choose to go as far as possible to the same one every single time. I know it's evident that people matter, but how does this play out when you consider the field of marketing? And what are you supposed to do if clients are starting to leave even when you're doing your best in terms of content? And we found this answer in the courses that we conduct online. We notice something very odd in the courses that we conduct online. The online courses, like the article writing course, they are remarkably difficult, and rightly so. You're trying to compress a skill that usually takes years, and you're trying to do that in just 12 weeks. So the intensity means that you're going to have several sleepless nights, you have to do assignments, you have to interact with the group, and you go, wait, interact with the group? Isn't this whole course about interacting with the teacher? just you, the student, and the teacher? What is this group nonsense about? But when you look at the results, you get a very clear picture. And this picture is this. It says that those who interact with the group do two things consistently well. The first thing is that they finish the course, but they show a much higher skill level than those that don't interact with their group. The second point is that clients having done one course, then show up for a second course, then a third, and then they buy many products, many services, come to offline events, and so on. The ones that don't interact with the group, the ones that merely do their assignments, they don't exactly fall off the face of the earth, but they, and I hesitate to say this, they are less skilled and more likely to leave, and they find it harder to go on for some reason or the other. Africans knew this a long time ago. In Africa, there's a saying, and it goes like this. It says, if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go with a group. However, when you're looking at the saying or the course or the cafe, what you see repeatedly is the interaction with people. We are really like a herd of elephants. We want to travel together. We want to travel as far as possible and not be some kind of lonely leopard sitting by itself on a tree in the middle of the Himalayan foothills. We want to be together. We want to at least know each other. The blinding flash merely is that if you don't get people to become part of a group, they will get less of a benefit. They will pick up fewer skills and finally they will leave. So one of the major things that we have to do is we have to get clients to meet. We don't just have to create content. We don't have to create all of this fancy stuff. We have to get clients to meet. And so this is why we have workshops, why we have all of these events. But going back to the workshop, when clients come to a workshop, they meet each other. Now, right at the start, we decided that we're not going to have this thousand person workshop. We're not going to have a 150 session webinar. We are going to have boutique workshops. 
which means that you don't make notes. Instead, you work on your project and the project of the group. Yes, here comes the group again. And in doing so, we find the clients come back repeatedly, not just for the workshop, but also for other products, for other services. They've connected with Renuka and me, but they've also connected with each other. But a workshop takes a lot of planning, and I'll get into that shortly. So we decided, let's try something else. Let's connect with clients offline, and let's have meetups. But we had paid meetups. You noticed that term, right? Paid. We tried to have free meetups, but they fizzled out. They died because it's easy for someone to look out of the window and look at the rain and then climb back into bed. When we had free meetups, they had very iffy results, but a paid meetup leads to commitment. And we've seen a 90 to 100 percent turnout. Anyway, the meetups have the same effect. The more people met, the more they knew each other, the more they then interacted in the membership site at 5000 BC. The interesting bit is that they didn't just interact with others they'd met, but with the rest of the members in 5000 BC as well. Which is why when you get to 5000 BC, you can see that a lot of the people that we've met at the meetup are also members of 5000 BC. Some of them have been members for 10 years, some of them have been around for 15, while others are relatively newer. If you're looking for a magic trick, it's right in front of your eyes. It's the people. If you look way back to the tribe, you'll notice that every person in a tribe could bring knowledge to the fireplace. When that elder didn't participate, the group was poorer. Or if a participating elder died, then that group's learning, that group's interaction, it was greatly impoverished. Going alone sounds pretty cool, but it's terrible for the group. And it's crappy for the individual. What we've covered so far is this almost blinding flash of the obvious. We know that people matter. We know this from our day-to-day -day lives. However, I think that... Based on our experience, this is the one thing that matters more than everything else, more than the content, more than your product, more than anything else. It's the people. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back to look at examples of how this works with 5000 BC, how this works with psychotactics, and why we haven't had to do all of that marketing. We haven't had to do ads and um, webinars and stand up on stage and do all the stuff that everybody else seems to do. When you look at it from the outside, it's like we're in a silo. And yet, we seem to take the vacations, we seem to do all the stuff. And largely, it's because of how we work with people. And this might not surprise you if you have a job, for instance, but we won't jump the gun right now. We'll come back to that shortly. But before we go into all that fancy stuff, let's take a little detour. Let's go into the second part of this podcast and find out what makes people happy. Robert Waldinger is the director of a project that should have been abandoned a few decades ago. He's the director of the Harvard Study of Adult Development. And this is possibly the longest study of adult life that's ever been done. Over the past 75 years, the study tracked the life of over 724 men, year after year, deeply digging into their homes, their lives, their health, and one more thing. When they started the study, they were asked how their life stories would pan out. What does the future look like? Now, a study like this is extremely rare because funding tends to dry up, the researchers get bored, or the people involved in the study die. Robert Waldinger talks about this from the TED stage, about this study. Since 1938, we've tracked the lives of two groups of men. The first group started in the study when they were sophomores at Harvard College. They all finished college during World War II, and then most went off to serve in the war. And the second group that we've followed was a group of boys from Boston's poorest neighborhoods, 
boys who were chosen for the study specifically because they were from some of the most troubled and disadvantaged families in the Boston of the 1930s. Most lived in tenements, many without hot and cold running water. When they entered the study, all of these teenagers were interviewed. They were given medical exams. We went to their homes and we interviewed their parents. And then these teenagers grew up into adults who entered all walks of life. They became factory workers and lawyers and bricklayers and doctors. One president of the United States. Some developed alcoholism. A few developed schizophrenia. Some climbed the social ladder from the bottom all the way to the very top, and some made that journey in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's a big fancy study. What did they learn? They learned what people really wanted, and that was happiness. And they found that real happiness came from something extremely boring: good relationships. Yes, that was it. If you take today's kids and you ask them. What do you want to be when you grow up? They want to be rich. Eighty percent of them want to be rich, and at least fifty percent of them want to be famous. But the thing that people figure out over time is that they crave relationships most of all. People who are socially connected to each other are physically healthier. They live longer and happier lives. Secondly, the quality of those relationships matter. Toxic relationships they don't count for much. And the third big lesson that they learned about relationships is that good relationships don't just protect our bodies; they protect our brains. It turns out that being in a securely attached relationship with another person year after year is protective. That the people who are in relationships where they feel that they can count on the other person, and especially in times of need, those people's memories stay sharper for much longer. And yes, this is a great study, but what has all of this got to do with your happiness? It's the blinding flash of the obvious. We all want stuff, don't we? We want to be rich. We want to be famous. But most of all, we want to feel wanted. All of those phrases, like "no one is an island" or "love me" or "hate me," but don't ignore me, it all comes into play. And this feeling of being wanted goes right to the very core of our happiness. Author and psychologist Dasha Keltner was called by Pixar, and they were making this movie Inside Out. So they needed guidance from someone who was an expert on emotions, and they turned to Dasha Keltner. Anyway, here's what Keltner said in an interview with Shane Parrish from FarnhamStreet.com. He said, "The connection, you know, happiness, our sense that life is going pretty well." Is strongly driven by three things in the vast scientific literature that we know. One of the positive emotions that we've been talking about, like mirth and laughter and love and sympathy. Another is how you handle stress and negative emotion, and the third is social connection. We are so focused on adding content, playing with technology, and dancing with keywords that we forget to work on the most basic and most wanted. Human emotions, and that is one of connectedness. Advertising and great sales letters—they're important. They're important for the client to become part of your community. But it's what you do next that makes all the difference. Keeping clients is, at least to my mind, the most important function of how you go about connecting them, how you get them to talk to each other, how they help each other. Now you can do all of this, and some people will still leave, but by and large, people want to stay. This concept applies to every job most of us have ever held. Most of us get into a job for economic or prestigious reasons. Even so, even when the money or the prestige is great, we feel like chumps, and we long to find another job if the company that we are in right now it isn't great. We long for the people. We long for the connections. We long to be treated with dignity, with respect. This blinding flash of the obvious is something almost every one of us has experienced, especially if we've been in a job somewhere. And it applies profoundly to your business.
But how do we go about creating this community? How do we go about creating this connectedness? Let's find out what we're doing at Psychotactics. And maybe you can add to that list as well. But I've been talking for almost 20 minutes. So let's end this podcast and continue it in part two of this episode on why clients leave. And first, let's summarize what we've learned so far. We've learned two things. The first thing is the most obvious, and that is that it's not the content that causes people to leave. It's the connectedness or the lack of connectedness that causes them to leave. And why is connectedness so important? That was our second blinding flash of the obvious. It's important because at the very core of it, we are only happy when we are connected with other people who are kind and helpful, or at least similar to us in many ways. That's the whole thing. That's been the whole history of that Harvard study. That's what emotion experts tell you, that without that connection, nothing much is happening. People leave because they don't feel connected. Even when they get money, even when they get fame, even when they get everything else, they leave. And it sounds so obvious because we know this to be true. I mean, we've been in jobs. We've known this to be true. And these are the two things that we've learned. Happiness and connectedness. And that's why people leave. Not because you have terrible content. Not because they want to save money. But because they're not part of that group. So we'll figure that out in episode two. But let's find out what's happening right now in Psychotactics Land. But what's the one thing that you can do today? Sit down with a piece of paper and ask yourself, why are you part of, say, some organization? Maybe it's a club, maybe it's your job, maybe it's anything. Why are you part of it? Why won't you leave? And obviously, one of the big reasons might be money, especially if it's a job. But if you were to get the same money in another place, why wouldn't you join that other place? And this realization makes a big difference. So if you've got a membership site or if you've got something where you've got a group of people together, why are they leaving? That's the question to ask yourself today. And with that, let's go into Psychotactics Land. And Psychotactics Land is so interesting because... What we do is we create these communities, and one of the communities is a workshop. Now, these workshops are usually about 15 people, but if it's a course like the article writing course, there are 35 people, and you go, how does that work? Isn't 35 people a lot of people? And I'll deal with it in the coming episode, but eventually what we do is we break it down to seven people, and we'll find out why seven people. The point is that the article writing course is showing up very quickly. It starts in July, but we're selling the seats on the 6th of April and the 7th of April. That's because what happens is I send you the notes and the audio and all the information in advance so that you don't get this, whoa, all of this information. I have to do all of this right away. You you can study it. You can go through it at your pace. And then we start off in July. So 6th and 7th of April. But the 6th of April is for 5,000 BC members, 7th of April to the general public. So if you're a 5,000 BC member, that's 6th of April. That's what you want to put in your diary, in your reminder system. Now, you have to be on a waiting list. That waiting list is at psychotactics.com slash awgoodies. So you're going to get goodies anyway. There are five or six really good pieces that you'll get from that being on that list. And so that's psychotactics.com slash awgoodies. Now, if you want the home study, that's on the 12th of April. Again, you have to be on the list, psychotactics.com slash awgoodies. So that pretty much brings us to the end of this podcast. However... There is a community, it's called 5000 BC, you know about it, you know that it's about introverts, you know that I answer all the questions there, but the core of 5000 BC is to be kind, be helpful, and be gone. Sounds like a bunch of words, but you know that it's more than that. So why don't you join us in 5000 BC? Why don't you experience it for yourself? And 
I think you'll enjoy it. So that's 5000BC.com. Again, there is a short cooling off period. You join, you pay a small fee, and then 21 days later, you're admitted into 5000 BC. So that's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye. Still listening? One of the coolest things that has happened on especially the cartooning course is just this be kind, be helpful. But this is kindness at a completely different level. So what happens is a lot of people do the cartooning course and then at some point they want to do an intermediate course. And that's about $500 more, which goes on for another two or three months. Anyway, what we found is that people will do the basic cartooning course, the starting point, and they'll learn for six months. They'll get very good at it. And some of them, they don't have the resources at that point in time to continue. And thrice, thrice people have stepped up and paid for someone else's tuition. So we've seen $1,500 in terms of a donation to somebody else on that course. And to me, that's just absolutely staggering that two strangers somehow connect in a way that is absolutely fascinating, learning to draw cartoons, but at a level where one person is willing to put their hand in their own pocket and cough up $500 for the other person. And this has been anonymous. So again, what we're looking at, even though this is like, you know, something that you're just listening to right now, it shows you the level at which you can create a community and which the community can be kind and helpful to each other. And this just staggers me that you can push kindness like a drug. And it's such a nice drug to be pushing all the time. I know that pushing stuff doesn't sound great, but kindness is amazing. Community is amazing. So We'll come back in the second episode. We'll look at the stuff that we're doing. And then in the third episode, I'll do a quick summary so that you can access that summary anytime you want. That's me, Sean D'Souza, saying bye for now. Bye-bye, and see you in 5000 BC.